And uh, today we're going to talk about exponents, actually exponent laws. And um, well, let's just uh, go over a few of them just by way of review uh, in case uh, you maybe have forgotten your exponent laws. It's used in grade 12 all over the place and I usually find every time I have to always uh, review these things. So just to set the record straight, uh, if I raise a to the power of 2, it's because I'm doing a times a. This is very, very self-evident, I hope you think. So 3 times 3 is like 3 squared. Okay, so, you know, and that little number on top of the a just reflects how many times I multiply a by itself. So if I multiply a by itself 3 times, I raise a to the power 3. And the same thing if I do actual numbers like 7, you know, 7 times 7 times 7 is 7 to the power 3. And by the way, I, I seem to be favoring negative, uh, sorry, positive numbers, but negative numbers work too, obviously. Um, exponents are also defined for fractions. So uh, a to the half is the square root of a. And... Um, you know, for example, uh, 4 to the half would be the square root of 4, which in turn is 2. And, uh, well, we can use any fraction. We don't have to use 1 half. We can say any fraction, like if we have b over c, so long as b and c are just whole numbers, um, then we are saying that this is equal to the cth root of a to the power b. So as long as b over c represents a rational exponent, we can uh, s make this equation true. Mind you, it could be any real number, uh, but that would require logarithms, which uh, this is a precursor to in advanced functions. So 9 to the, say, 4 fifths, let's say, would equal the fifth root of 9 to the 4. So the 5, notice, goes in the third, and the 9 is, or sorry, the 4 is what you raise 9 to the power of uh, when you're using thirds. So, all right, let's, um, let's do another one. So a to the b times a to the c, uh, you're multiplying two exponential expressions. And uh, if they're to the same base, then you simply add the exponents. So 3 squared times 3 cubed is 3 to the 2 plus 3, which is 3 to the fifth. And um, you can do this um, by expanding. You can show that it's 3 to the 5th by expanding. So 3 times 3 is uh, 3 squared. 3 times 3 times 3. And you notice that this amounts to multiplying 3 by itself 5 times. So uh, it justifies the addition of exponents. In fact, by definition, that's what you do. You just add the exponents. And it saves you all the trouble of having to expand and then count the number of times you're multiplying 3 by itself, which would be a lot of bother in some cases. a to the b over a to the c is a to the b minus c. And uh, then, um, for example, 3 to the 4th divided by 3 squared is just 3 squared because you're doing 4 minus 2 in the exponent. 3 to the 4th expands to 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 squared expands to 3 times 3, and 3 times 3 is common on the top and the bottom. You can just cross them out. You're left with 3 by its uh, multiplied by itself, which is 3 squared. So um, uh, negative exponents are also defined. So if a is raised to a power of, say, minus 1, as long as a is not 0, um, this will work. So a to the minus 1 is just 1 over a. a to the minus b is 1 over a to the positive b. And uh, so we can maybe do some, just a couple of simple examples. So 1 one third would be 3 to the minus 1. And let's say, I don't know, for the second uh, illustration, 3 to the, I don't know, minus 3 is 1 over 3 cubed. And 3 cubed is 27, so that's just kind of like 1 over 27. Okay. 
Now, um, the power of 0 is defined, so any number to the power of 0 is 1. And so 4 to the power of 0 is 1, 9 to the power of 0 is 1. Um, let's see, 1 to the power of 0 is 1. I guess that's kind of obvious. A pi to the power of 0 is 1. A half to the power of 0 is 1. So even numbers less than 1. 0 0.000001 to the power of 0 is 1. And um, the only thing, um, the only exception to the rule is that there is no definition for 0 to the power of 0. 0 to the power of 0 is not 1. In fact, it's not really defined at all.